Fir Grove because I went to Fir Grove Public School. And um, I came, when I came there, I came, uh, the teacher said I came from Montreal. I was telling them I came from Montreal. And they made it look like I was the king of French. <laughs> and I was like, I don't even speak French. <laughs> so, but I remember that moment. Everybody had me off like, yo, asking me all these questions and everything. But the French that they were doing... When I came in, like it was ridiculous. I was on for it was, was kind of embarrassed of them because I'm saying, hey, you guys don't even know this, and I didn't speak for any French in Montreal, so. But that was one of my most memorable moments. That, that was nice, huh? Yeah, because you're nice. a bit of a, uh, a new kid. Yeah, a new kid yeah you know <laughs> exactly, exactly. So what are you doing with your hands right there? Oh, right I'm now? just give a little description. I'm just roll, I'm, ro I'm rolling listeners. up a blunt right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Chilling. The reason with this wonderful reporting. And a blunt is. And a blunt. Oh, oh, sorry. A blunt is cigar. Century Sam. You should. You guys right. should give me some money for this promotion. Um, <laughs> we take out this. The, you know the gar. Put in the chronic inside. Roll it up. The chronic. <laughs> yeah, the chronic. This is that. Explain this that. is the sticky. Yeah. The sticky? It is sticky. <laughs> well, they take out the chronic. That's what it is. Hold on one second. Yo, Maurice! Yeah. Give me your scissors. Right. So, marijuana, right? Marijuana. Yeah. Yeah. Marijuana. Ga Gain J. Yeah. But and so, why do you need the cigar? The cigar? You just roll to elevate the, his performance during this interview. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, this is just, this is just this is the early morning, you know? It's breakfast. <laughs> And so tell me a little bit about No, you need to do You need to rub a blunt with Paul Martin. Paul then Martin. you'll see that. Then his Paul, eyes are open. Well, Paul Martin will say, I, don't, I, don't, I only smoke, I don't inhale. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll have to be like, you're lying, man. You were smoking the sticky, man. <laughs> no, on the real, though, um, it's unfortunate that Paul Martin only comes around the area when just bad things happen and all these kind of stuff, you know? But, um, and so where else would you, t would, you, would you take him? From your own... I would take him to Driftwood Shrub, Connection, the lane. Um, um, Connection Lane, these are nicknames for, um, for, these, um, for Grand Ravine and um, New York Woods. And Connections, we were talking about that earlier. Why would you take him there? Because um, that, that's where the people are. And you know? And that, what would you want him to see? Should, I want, show me something that you see when you think of, of that. Of that, it's a, it's one of the housing developments, right? Yeah. Um. This is what I see. Let me tell you exactly. What you mean, garbage bag? Or not? You don't need to follow me. I, I do. <laughs> you do. I know it. Give me a second, but I'm gonna put this board trash in the air. Well. What do you see? Get one in. Did you turn on the light here so you can see on the video? Hit the light behind you. Yo, I think that's what you should see. Press review key to receive setup instructions. Uh oh, I plugged it out. Well, um, hi, cousin. Yo, do, you want me to sit over there at, at the thing, though? Yeah. You want me to sit at the stairs? No, that's all right. That's right. It's just comfortable. You can see it? Yeah, that's all right. That's cool. You see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, well, I'll show Paul Martin what, um, all the youths that are outside hanging out. I will show him the community centers that are closed, that these children, these youngins, they ain't got nowhere to express themselves. You know, I'll make them, I'll make him know what's, what his money is. Not oh, doing he, gave, for us. he gave us a, a million bucks for new programs. He but gave him a million dollars. Tell, not me. <laughs> <laughs> but tell him the kind of programs we need. Not like more social programs, but maybe like a recording studio Yo, or something. It, or a video it, camera. It's a, you know what? You know? As a matter of fact, that's that's a good point. Um, they're given programs for things that, not to say that aren't important, but the youths them aren't really interested in it. They should do something. You know who needs money? JaneFinch.com? Yeah, yeah. Say it again. JaneFinch.com. More time, more time. JaneFinch.com. No, okay. JaneFinch.com. Yeah. <laughs> means a lot of money because they're doing a lot of different good things for the community. If it wasn't for their, their website, I wouldn't even get to know these guys and get to even know. Oh, is that right? I yeah. Know. So, and I live in the community. So, that's a wonderful thing. He'd be smoking Sticky Icky by himself. Sticky Icky. All by himself. Lonesome. Lonesome. Yeah. No friends. <laughs> JaneFinch.com. So, show me someone in the connections. <laughs> one, one kid who you see. Well, this is this this youngin right here. He's from Driftwood. He's from well, he's originally from Palisade, but he lives lives in Driftwood now. And why don't you tell? Why don't you tell? What what is Paul Martin not doing for us? He's not doing a lot of stuff, man. You know, come talk in the yeah. come talk. Yeah. Introduce yourself. You stay please. here. Yeah. You stay, you stay. Introduce yourself, man. <laughs> this is five Dutch, man. Yeah. yeah. Introduce yourself and tell me what. Uh, yeah. 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 These guys could use more light. Can can this there light is. come up? 
Not for me. Well, you can try turning that light on. It doesn't no. work. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't work? Yeah. Is it plugged in? Yeah, it's plugged in. Um, yeah, I just continue. Don't worry about it. Alright. Well, um, yeah, yeah um... Uh, you were just about to start, yes, yeah, so just uh, introduce yourself and tell me... Uh, what, uh, my name is Maurice, you know, I play cash, so that's what they call me, you know, and I'm a, I'm a local rapper, and I got my crew, Five Dutch, George Reefa, and Young Grover, and, you know, we do our thing, we record, mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. we're trying to do it, you know? And, and so you guys, you, you guys have managed to... You know, pull something together. What, what, what is it about what, what you do and and and, and, and Get the, sticky the music that you've been playing? What is it that you'd like to see happen for for the other kids who you know in the neighborhood? What would it take? Um, I mean, we're talking about this million that Paul Martin yeah. is handing out. What would you want? You guys to got spend skills. On? No. I don't want to spend it on something like gardening skills to do me cutting good, that stuff off. So it's good for the, for the community. Mm -hmm. Studio, you know, a studio definitely a studio because. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of a lot of the kids around here watch TV, and they probably want to, you know, they see how it goes down on TV. They'll be getting A pluses to go to the studio. <laughs> yeah, so probably they can do a so program yeah. or a recording program in school. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. they can take a class in and you know, Even directing like. programs or stuff yeah. like that so they can get behind the scenes. Because, what do you, as I said earlier, you got to do things on the youth that are focused on it right now. Instead, hip-hop is the one of the most um, Uni universal yes. and one of the most... Um, money making genres of music right now and what you need to do is instead of fight against it you gotta embrace it you know what mm -hmm. I mean take, take me take me to another place that you put on the tour for Paul Martin you said the lane what's that the lane that's um Grand Ravine that's one of the original bottom finch bottom finch that's one of the original um places as well in Gina Finch um the and, reason and why yeah why? the reason um, the reason why I would take him to one of those places because as I said earlier you get to actually see the people what they're going through and see see what where the money is going to and what's going to be good out of it because look at it they put um a brand new basketball court in the lane for that little girl that got shot that got murdered there a couple years back which is good that they put a basketball court but it's unfortunately they just realized because the girl got shot that's when they have to put the basketball court and now they now it's up they don't even maintain it up there yeah that, like, like, before i was talking to mark like the politicians they don't act they react Exactly. They don't so tell me about this basketball court. So a court was put up there because this little girl got shot. Yeah. And um, and, got and did anyone do, does Bad anyone scene. ever use this court? The, um, yeah, the whole community uses the court. That's the thing, and it's, and it's still broken. There's no nets. There's, there's no net. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and there's a backboard. Yeah. Exactly. Just a backboard. Yeah, but it's bigger than the court. It's cause, a Raptors logo, right? Because the, the courts isn't what we really need. What we really need are is more programs, as I said earlier, the use of technology to, and yeah. more technology for the community and more um better jobs. Because yeah. only job agencies agencies around here, everybody's getting paid eight dollars, seven dollars an hour. And so what do you expect people to do when they're only getting paid $8, $7 yeah, but an hour? In, in, it's, in our school systems, we need more things. Like at Earl Hag near uh, Finch and Young, they have a television set in every classroom. And here, we're lucky we have like uh, <laughs> they got paper to wipe our hands <laughs> in the washroom, man. <laughs> they, they got the VCR um, locked to the TV yeah. in Westview School. I remember <laughs> that at least. No, I'm good. Yeah, no. no. And, but anyways, what we need now, we need more... Um, we said earlier we need more programs that are geared towards you because even me even when I was coming up as a young youth in East, in the um, Jada Finch community we were we were hanging out in the community center playing basketball at least there was a you know we vented that we kept in shape you know there's a lot of different programs that um, a lot of people you may not be in basketball or doing music dance whatever the case may be and it was it was a little bit better but right so, now so, so where, where where's that Would no, you just, include that on the tour yeah, that's yeah. That was Driftwood Community Center, the same community center that Paul Martin was in. Um, he, he was the only one allowed in the community center because he locked it for everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Did they lock it? Tell me. Yeah, well, that. there's not a, the the program, the basketball program, and everything is is cut is cut down, right? Mm -hmm. Well, for right now, because they're fixing the center. But even before they were fixing the center, because like at least when I remember, we used to go, we used to come to the center like every day after school. Right, and, and they now, cut it down to like a couple of days a week. Yeah, and they cut it in a couple of days like a week, two days a week. No, and now it's like they should pay. They should pay the youth to develop programs, and not yeah. people on the outside or people yeah. from outside Jane Finch yeah. or politicians. Exactly. Take that point out. Yeah, you, they should. They should. The money who they're given to, like, okay, look, the Gumry case or whatever. Every, all these big people were all getting all these millions of dollars. 
All they're doing is taking their money and going on vacation. And they're giving us, they're not even giving us a quarter. They're giving us a smidget of it. What you need to do is give the real p people who are in the community the funds to deal with it. Like JaneFinch.com. I mean, these guys do so much things independently without anybody financing us or anything. And when we tr do try to get money, like these grants that the so-called the government says is for us, it's an arm and leg just to get it. I mean, just to get video fact. To get video fact, you gotta—they gotta like your song. Why mm -hmm. should they have to like your song to get oh, to get a video? video fact like three times and couldn't get video fact. Video fact only—you know what I'm only, saying? They only help out the people that they think they could. That you know that sounds uh, how do you say um commercial? What what's video effect? Is video this a fact. Program that was yeah. a program. They uh, sponsor you. They they give you money to to um produce your music. Yeah, video. to help you produce your, your music video. Oh, okay, and you guys applied for it and no yeah, yeah, for no luck. Time, no luck. Hmm. Tell me how that sounds on the radio and you know, all that type of stuff. Was good, but. but and the reason why they they don't usually video fact don't usually give um street artists or when they say artists like us a chance is because what we're doing is we're doing a, giving you the perception of can of Toronto that you don't wanna you see. Don't it's like the real it, Toronto D V D. Yeah, they're like yeah. Exactly, exactly the real Toronto D V D. Where else speaking of which, where else would you take Paul Martin if it was your tour? I'm taking the Shepherd, like there's on there's different Ontario and there's Ontario housing, just all all along Jane. All along Jane, if you notice compared to every street in all of Toronto, Jane is the only place where most um like I don't want to say the most poverty, but it's the most like the most welfare recipient, the most poorest people live on Jane, you know what I'm saying? So what we need to do is we need to direct like at those people, because that's who it's going to be affected the most. Okay, show me, show me someone, a person you'd, you'd introduce Paul Martin to, if not Stephanie Payne. Who, who would you introduce him to? <laughs> a person I love friend. to talk to Paul Martin. They'd have a lot of security guards around, and they'll be like, "Oh, watch him." Watch the black guy with dreads. <laughs> Watch him. What's that in his hand? What's that in his hand? He's moving too fast. Yeah. But on the real, yeah, I would love to talk to Paul Martin. Um, a lot of people that I know would like to talk to Paul Martin, but just wouldn't talk to Paul Martin, just for the mm -hmm. fact that they know that he would be talking to them for um, how do you say, for part, just for um, votes. And what, what what would you what would you want to talk about? What I don't want to talk to him about. The sticky, I guess. The sticky. <laughs> Legalizing, man. Yeah, oh, you gotta play that on the radio. Yeah. Legalizing, man. No, but um, <laughs> I'll talk to Paul Martin about um. Legalizing marriage, you wanna? No, I talked to him on the, on a serious note. I talked to him about the the community, like for even the even welfare. You know, like I I don't I'm not on welfare, but I see people on welfare, certain people, and the the money that they get alone is is not even is like they can barely survive. <laughs> Again, show me somebody, someone you're thinking of when you say that. Um, one, one face, one person. I don't have anybody right here, right now. I just can, in your minds. Oh, you? just in my minds. Um, I know a couple of people down the. I know a couple of people in um down the lane. Show me. Thinking um, like don't name them. I ain't gonna <laughs> name them still, but an uh, old lady down the lane. She got like grandchildren and stuff, and she's on assistance. And um, the the. She gets a problem just to get a regular, the regular check that she can, that she needs to survive, you know? How many kids is she looking after? She takes care of like, uh, like, five, like four or five kids. She takes care of four or five kids on a daily basis, mm -hmm. cooks and cleans and stuff. And she's just getting by, you know? And They just give you enough to keep you from robbing a bank. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Um, Paul Martin should also go to... He should also talk to um, these community leaders. I make him talk to well, um, a, a teacher that I know in Oakdale. Okay, show me the teacher. His name is Mr. Hall. Um, he's try. He does a lot of stuff to take the initiative to um, help the community and so forth. And he does it out, out of the, his money, out of his own, you know, his own money. And you got to meet those kind of people still, because there's a people lot of people who don't want the pictures, who don't need the pictures. Yeah, yeah. like as again as I said, Janiefish.com. I mean, like. The only reason why you guys are hollering at JaneFinch.com is because all this violence is happening in Jane Finch, which is unfortunate that you're just hollering at us for that reason, because we were here doing music and doing movies and doing all this stuff. But you got to understand, like, you met, you met these guys like that. These guys are doing some of their own money. You should, you know, you should direct it in their direction. I guess the money's just going to the wrong people. Rich is getting richer and the poor just get juke. And if you're going to show Paul Martin something when you said 
you know, it's it's the shooting that gets the attention. Show me something that you'd show them then to say, well, this has a lot of potential. Uh, Your music video. My music like video. Me. My yeah. music video. My music. Yeah. The, the the whole movement, the janefish.com movement. Um, well, and it's a movement. Too. It is a movement. It is a movement because people... Cause How would you describe it? It's our community influencing the world. You know what I'm saying? So it's blink, like... Blink, blink. Blink, <laughs> blink. <laughs> but it's like... Um, we all, even though we've gone through different things and we were different races and different um, backgrounds and so forth, we all know exactly what it feels like to be um, stereotyped, you know, discriminated. Saying, discriminated, all those bad stuff. So we all that brings us together and it makes us more strong and it makes us more more aggressive in life. That's to what rise just, up, exactly. Not, not be the underdogs mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. exactly. How would you say you've seen the area change then? I mean, with these kinds of things going on, the jfinch.com. Uh, stuff. How would you say the neighborhoods changed since you moved here as a kid? What would you? Um, the neighborhoods changed by um, the youth are taking over the neighborhood. The youth have always been taking over. The younger guys always are the people that would take. With the future, with the future, of yeah. right? course. But right now, I'm noticing the youth. Them, I, I'm 27, so you uh, people younger than me are taking a lot more initiative in their business and taking a lot more initiative in what they want to do, and they're and they're doing it independently. They're not waiting for people. They're not asking the government for anything because the government ain't, ain't giving us nothing. There's a lot of pride here. You don't have Mississauga, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, people in Mississauga ain't say I'm from Mississauga, yeah. Aaron Mills. <laughs> yeah. The reason why they ain't going to say that is because like they don't really care about their community. Their mom has a nice house. They're living in there until their mom dies or whatever and gets in the house. <laughs> Up here, everybody's renting. Nobody yeah. has a house. Yeah. One in two people may have a house. And even if they do have a house in the community, yeah, they're, still, they're still poor. Yeah. They can still barely pay their mortgage. Yeah. So it's like people here, they learn, they, they learn that. Christmas is not all about get, getting gifts. You know what I'm saying? You gotta. There's other things you can do to appreciate what you have around you. You know, because what, what happens at Christmas? I'm on it again. Oh, Christmas! Uh, Christmas, the Jane Finch compared to Christmas and the suburbs is two different Christmases. Because <laughs> the suburbs, everybody's inside singing carols. At Jane and Finch Christmas, everybody's outside going to their friend's house. Yo, your mom got food. Oh shit! I'm going to your, his mom's house, and then I'm going to their mom's house, and we're not even worried about gifts. We just we're just happy to see everybody. We're happy to be alive. Yeah, you know what I'm true. saying? Because because every Christmas something happens to somebody. You know. Again, a moment. A Someone mo you're thinking of when you say that. Oh yeah, man. That was like a lot of like all the. I remember the Christmas or the New Year's when Junior D got it. Junior D got got uh, got it in um in shop nightclub and. You know what I'm saying? That just the reason why that sticks out of my head is because um I said I was even gonna go out that night and I went out, so those kind of things make you make you uh, get a good grasp on life and realize that, you know, you can be here today and gone tomorrow. Junior Day was a rapper as well. Yeah, he's one of the first rappers in the community you that met got his sister. Yeah. You met his sister? Yeah. yeah, he got me he got me into doing this rap thing too, you know. Got me doing it seriously. So I used to freestyle but he's the one that said, Hey, go in the studio. And do your thing. Hold on a second. Mo Yo, Maurice! Yeah. I can blaze up. Should I open the... Should I, go, should I open the... Should I go in the backyard? Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, no, we're, you, you can just... I'm just going to move the chair. Oh, yeah, you can... Uh, oh, okay. You're taking responsibility for your own community. But think about it. Look at the potential. Look at what we've done with what we've had. So what? Do you, how much more people can they have helped do more, you know, do more positive stuff. I mean, on the real, I took my music career serious, but I didn't take it that serious because I didn't have no money to do a video. I went to Video Fact, I even went to school to Trevis to, to ask the students to do a student video for me, and I still had to pay them more money than I had to pay these guys here. So it's like, how do you How do you make, uh, how do you, you said you're not on welfare, you're working, what, what Sticky, you icky, oops, <laughs> no, I didn't say that. <laughs> no, no. You have a job, right? Mm -hmm. I have a job, and I sell my CDs, sell my music and stuff. Yeah. So that's how I make my money. And and I guess for everybody has two jobs down here. And I guess <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> and I guess it's I, I guess in a neighborhood like this, as you say, the thing you get is community, even though you don't get. Uh, there's a lot of other things missing. You get a sense of people can. Uh, identify with it that you might not get in another part of, of town. Of course, exactly. Because they're all at the bottom. We're all at the bottom. That, yeah. We're all at the bottom. 
and um, we're at the bottom. Like, I'm not even gonna lie. There's a lot of a lot of things may happen in this area that may not happen in another area. But you have to understand the reason why it's happening is all because of the finances. That's it. If people had finances, like making or making more money. The poverty, the uh, the crime rate would be yeah because they all be chilling at Yorkdale buying clothes and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or they would be doing something with their money. What's it like if you go up to Yorkdale? What, uh, oh, I don't, I don't shop nothing in Yorkdale. I, I just shop where because Yorkdale number one is too expensive. When you, when we go to Yorkdale most of the time from this community, we're going to the movie theater. Yeah. Or we may go buy one or two things, but to think that you're gonna have a shopping spree in Yorkdale, nobody yeah. does that. No, like, why? Yeah, if I went to Yorkdale with Blackest, I would just probably wait outside because I don't want the security to look at me. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's, a, that's another reason, too. The toy cops. Again? Give me a moment. Something, <laughs> have you had that happen? Oh, it had to happen. Had to happen. They had to happen all over. Just walking in the mall with a couple of my friends, and they look at us and be like, you're doing something. Okay. You know? And give me a moment. Just one moment. Um, hold on. Yeah. Yo. And where you felt is that, okay, this is what it should be like. When I was younger in Fir Grove, and uh, the, I think it was the crime dog came to the school or something, the police officers appeared to be like the friendliest people. And I, re and I tell you the truth, I, I, I wasn't really um, afraid of them or alert of, aware of them, but, you know, I didn't think that they were as bad as they, they were, as, as bad as everybody else thought they were, until I became older, and instead of a young black child that was becoming a black youth, becoming a black man, and they're... A marginalized you know black what I'm man. And they, yeah. they looked at me a little bit different. I remember the first night, the first night I ever got harassed by a police officer, I was living right at 4750, I was um, 13, 14 years old, just turned 14, my brother never came home that night. My mother told me, it was like what, it was like 12 o'clock. So my brother's two years old, younger than me, so he's like, what, 12? And my mother said, go outside and look for him. So I had to walk through Shore, I'm looking for him, I didn't see him. I walked in Drupal looking for him, and I was pissed yeah. off because I was sleeping, you know? And uh, I think I had a track pants on it's a shirt on, or on. something. And you know what, I know what else I had? I had a, a plastic bag and I had some gum. Some gum in my plastic bag, like some X, XL or whatever. Because it ripped out It ripped out of the, the casing, so I put it in a plastic bag and I went. And uh, when, I, when I came back now, I see a police cruiser stop right in front of me. And I'm like, yo, I'm like, he's, he asked me a question, where are you going? I said, yo, you can't ask me no question. I'm 14 years old, I'm going home, I'm looking for my brother. Throws me on the hood of the car, and um, I, just said, I didn't say nothing. And I, I kissed my teeth, like, like you know, it's kissing your teeth. And he said, yo. If you ever do that again, I'll break your fucking teeth. <laughs> I'll never forget that day. And, I, yeah. and the way how he said it to me, I was scared because that dude, he was big. And he had like a gun and he smelt like cigarettes. And I was like, yo. And I went home and I went home. And I told my moms. My mom was like, oh, she, she got upset and everything. But she didn't. We what are we going to do? We called 31 Division said so and so did yeah. this to me. And from that point in my life, I realized that the police don't. They, they, when they see me, they don't see a person that they need to help. They see a, a convict or a target. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I'm always got to be. I don't. I'm not aggressive with them because, you know, some of them are really intelligent, just like how anybody else. Not, not people. And they get angry when they get angry. They get ignorant. They just show their power. How they, they have more power in a certain areas. Yeah. So what I do is I just, I deal with them diplomatic. Mm -hmm. Not to say every police officer is like that. Because I'm not saying that every police officer yeah. is, um... Diplomatic how? Like, yes, master? <laughs> yes, master! Don't hit me, sir! I'm so sorry, master! No, no, no. A moment when you when you felt like you were talking to an officer who, who, who was different. Who, you said oh, everybody was yeah, different. of course, man. <laughs> One, a couple of times, man, I was driving and... It's a complete 31 Division 2. And friggin' pulled me over and... I was like, I was late for work, and I was like, I just got a ticket again, and I just said, yo, what's the problem? Why? What happened? How come you're pulling me over? I, I want to go. And I just, just started venting like that, and he said, you know what? Take a, take 10 minutes. Go, go, turn around. I didn't see nothing. Just go about your business. And he, he let me go, and I said, I said to myself, oh, my gosh. <laughs> the, 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 you know, not every police officer is an asshole, man. I guess, you know, and so, I, so I know a couple of people, too, that, um, or at least I know one person that 
he said he wants to be a police officer. And I guess the way, how he wants to be here, it's, I guess it's, you know, in his heart, he really is genuine, really wants to make a difference for the community. Someone you know like here in that area? No, not in this area still, but. Hmm. And but someone who you think would make a great officer? Yeah, because his values are, you know, but at the end of the day, it's all would a conspiracy. It it's all a conspiracy because his police officers are all working together, working with these politicians and these judges, and it's all a secret society, and it's all well, bull. Well, for a moment, though, you know, just to just to play with the idea that it might be real, would that be worth putting some of that million into? It's the kind of program that... Uh, I was going to say, it was nice knowing you, but I guess. <laughs> I don't think, I know, I don't think that um, no matter how much, no matter how much you want to believe that it would be nice, you can't believe in a lie, and you can't believe in something that's not there. And, he, and if you start believing a lie, it becomes true that it's not true, just living a fantasy. What we need to do is we need to, we need to directly deal with, uh, deal with the people in the community. Instead of trying to how to control the people and how to direct the people, what we need to do is we need to talk to the people, let them do it themselves. Because ultimately, no matter what happens, the relationship between these two people are always going to have friction. The relationship between, you know what I'm saying? We need to yeah, enlighten yeah. the people. We need to enlighten the people. People need to know more information. We need to, when we go to Westview School, when we go to these schools, we got to have not just history about Abraham Lincoln and Columbus. Gotta, gotta have, you know, we got to have history about, like, Sung Tzu. We got to have history about, like, General Hannibal, Marcus Garvey, you know what I'm saying? Haile Selassie. We got to have a variety. Gandhi, you know what I mean? So everybody can see everybody's culture and be more empowered and be more conscious and more aware of what to do in life. And then what happens? Everybody, the system is a better place. But because we were focused on how we can constrict and control everybody and this is happening in this area and what we got to do is this and we got to do more crime we're just make we're just giving fuel to the fire so for me to say that to um, a police officer is there, there couldn't be peace between the community and the police officers we need to help the community first the community's got to be uplifted and maybe one day but until then you know yeah, give me a moment then a neighborhood that you love you have no intention of Like, of, of, of when you really feel connected to this place. Oh, I, I feel connected to this place every day when I walk. But give me one video. video. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. When I when we did my when we did our video down in Connection, it's not finished yet. But we did our video in the community, and it was like every, all the little children came out. Enough old people came out. People were just walking by, seeing what's going on, and just for them to see the camera around the area and people taping them, they all felt like. It was their video, you know what I'm saying? And that was a nice that was a nice little feeling. Z zoom in. One moment, one face to still see. I see the I see that little shot that Mark edited with the, the Spanish kid child and the, the black child holding hands. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like a UNICEF commercial. <laughs> 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 I like it though, I like it though. It was a nice it was a nice touch. And mm -hmm. the thing about it is that we we barely we don't have the funds that these other major guys have, and what we're doing with the little that we got yeah. is... We could be doing this every day, and yeah, there'd be no crime because everyone's too busy making their videos, everybody's you know, too busy trying to get music. famous. Exactly. Yeah. But that exactly. moment, uh, that, that moment on, on, on video was really... That was, that was like, that was a remarkable moment. And also the close-ups of probably your face, right? Now. Oh, <laughs> we need to talk about that now, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Blackest, this is great. Thank you. No I've problem. Got more tape yeah. here than I can use, but Please. all of it is, is yeah. great. Okay, yeah, no thanks. problem, no problem, no problem.